Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at a thin and light from Acer. This is the Acer Aspire A514 52 582Y. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this is one of the longest names I've had in a little while. So from now on, we'll just refer to this as the Acer Aspire or the A514. Obviously, if you're looking for a particular model, do take notice of the links in the comment section below. There are many, many models, all very, very similar, but with varying prices. So do check out the ones that are in the product listings below. So what is this? Well, this is a laptop with a 14 inch screen. It's got a really nice IPS screen and it's based around the latest 10th gen Intel Comet Lake processor. Now this has a 15 watt TDP. It has a turbo boost of 4.2 gigahertz, all core boost of about 3.9 gigahertz, and when not in use, some of the cores will go down to as low as 800 megahertz. So this thing really can sip power to give you that all day battery life. And speaking of battery life, the battery life on it is actually excellent, which is one of the key points of this. This is not a gaming laptop by any means, so if you plan on using one of these, then uh, yeah, forget it. It isn't that kind of laptop. This is designed for general work purposes, spreadsheets, internet usage, working on the go, that kind of thing. It's very thin, it's very light, 1.7 kilos roughly, so not terribly light, so you're gonna lose it, but it's got a little bit of weight to it, so it feels like a substantial product. The processor backed up with eight gigs of RAM. Now it's actually weird configuration, so it's got four gigs which is soldered to the board, and it's got an additional four gigs in the memory slot in the rear, which is easily replaceable, as we'll take a look at a little bit later. Also, it's got a NVMe drive, which is a 256 gig model from Kingston. And again, if you want to in the future, you can quite easily remove that and replace it with its modern day replacements. Graphics are taken care of actually by the processor. So effectively it's an APU and this is using the Intel UHD graphics. Again, this is one of the reasons why this isn't really a gaming laptop. Not that you can't play games on it, just uh, they're not great. Certain games like Plants vs Zombies and those kind of little mini games and Windows Store games will run absolutely fine, but kind of AAA titles and even some of the esports games are going to struggle, as you can see from this footage. So when we actually get this, what do you actually get in the box? Well, first of all, you get a up to 45 watt charger, you get a charging cable, for your particular region. You also get a, an additional caddy. So if you want to, there is actually a space inside the machine so you can add an additional two and a half inch drive, whether that's a HDD or an SSD, entirely up to you. You, you can put anything you like in there, up to around about eight terabytes. So if you need a little bit of extra storage, maybe you're a photographer or video editor and you wanna take your footage and transfer it from your camera to the laptop, this is probably gonna be a really good choice. So let's take a look at the actual unit itself. The top case is aluminium. The rest of it is all plastic. So this is all plastic, but the top is actually aluminium, surprisingly, which adds to some of that weight. Again, this is 1.7 kilos, so it's not particularly light, but we've got some great connectivity on here. So some things uh, can outweigh the actual deficits of the weight. So on this side, we've got most of our IO. So on this side, we've got our power jack, We've got an ethernet port. Now this supports up to gigabit ethernet speeds. Unfortunately, it's not an Intel chip, it's a Realtek chip, but you can't have it all. This is a relatively budget priced unit. Now actually, while we're talking of budget pricing, currently at the moment here in July, 2020, you can pick these up for around about 550 pounds in the UK, which is a little bit higher than what we'd normally expect to pay for this kind of unit. But we are in the kind of COVID times where there is a little bit of price gouging and with people trying to work from home, prices have shot up. I would say after the COVID thing has settled down, hopefully this should retail around about the 450 to 500 pounds mark. But again, that is uh, speculation. So back to the ports, we've got an HDMI port. So if you wanna connect this up to a separate monitor to increase your workspace, you can do that. And that is HDMI 1.4 and will support up to 4K 60 Hertz screen. Next that you've got a pair of USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. And also we've got a USB 3.1 type C port. So pretty much all your options are covered there. It's nice to see these faster ports all gathered together. Moving around to the front, we've got nothing of interest, although there are some front mounted or bottom firing front mounted speakers there. And actually the speakers are quite loud as we'll see a little bit later on. 
Moving around to the other side, we've got a combo headset jack. So that's 3.5 mil, which supports microphones and headsets. We've also got a USB 2.0 port, which is going to be perfect for plugging in maybe a wireless mouse or a corded mouse. Next up, we've got some indication lights for hard drive activity and power LED. And also you've got your Kensington lock slot. On the back, nothing at all. This is all entirely hinge. And speaking of hinge, if I open this up now, you can see how well the hinge actually does. This is one of the few laptops I've seen which actually will open completely flat. I don't entirely see the reason for it, but it can actually do it. So there we go, it's completely flat. I don't know why you'd want it like that, but essentially it'll do it. So it will hinge completely, pretty much 180 degrees. And the hinge itself is actually quite nice and stays in place. There is a little bit of flex in the screen and a little bit of movement and a bit of wobble. But again, this is a relatively light machine, so you do have to expect that kind of thing. Talking of screen, screen is a 14 inch IPS screen, which is 60 Hertz. Would have been nice to have seen it as 75 Hertz screen, but essentially, this is a workhorse. It doesn't necessarily need to be that fast to refresh. And I've actually used this for many, many hours and I didn't find my eyes getting fatigued or strained or anything like that. It's actually a really nice display, really nice vivid colors. Movies look great, YouTube videos, web pages, everything looks really nice, crisp and sharp, even with my eyes. Taking up some of the real estate area where the screen is, we've also got microphones and also there is an HD front facing camera. So for Skype calls and that kind of thing, no problems there. It's not the greatest of resolution as you'll see from some of this footage. So this is the built-in webcam camera from the Acer Aspire A514-52-582Y. Hopefully it's come through clearly and actually from what I can see on the screen at the moment, it doesn't look too bad, but I'll let you be the judge of that. But as you can see, it pretty much gets the job done. Sound quality isn't excellent, but certainly passable. If you wanted to increase the quality of the audio, you can obviously plug in a USB microphone or just put on a headset. You can, if you want to, use a Bluetooth setup. So maybe you've got some AirPods. You can use those. This has got Bluetooth 5.0. Also backed up with Wi-Fi 6 from Intel, which is another nice feature to see. So we've got some really strong characteristics for connectivity, both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. One of the downsides of the screen area is this whole chin setup. There is a lot of bezel. It does actually say it's got narrow bezels, which technically I suppose it has down the sides, but the top and this chin area a little bit too big for my liking in 2020. But again, like I keep on saying, this is a relatively budget model. So moving down to the keyboard area. So we've got this really nice chiclet style keyboard. And I actually really like these Acer keyboards. It's a great layout. There's plenty of distance between the keys, but not too much so your fingers get lost. And for typing, I find it absolutely fantastic. It's a very low noise setup. And the kind of the keys are pretty much the same response all the way across. There isn't any obvious flexing in the deck either, which is nice to see. Also, we've got a trackpad, which works really well, and it's got quite a nice defined click on both sides. Also built in is a fingerprint reader. So if you want to take advantage of that, you can do. So when you log into your PC, you don't have to remember passwords, etc. Just type your finger on there and it will log into the device, which is excellent. Unfortunately, it doesn't support Windows Hello. The built-in webcam doesn't support that feature, but I think the touch sensor actually works really nicely. Looking at the base of the unit, you've got some rubber feet along the real whole back of there, which keeps it nice and steady. A couple of rubber feet on the front next to these mounted speaker areas. Also got a pretty decent grill section. The cooling section underneath there, you've got your single heat pipe cooler for the Intel processor. Also you've got access to all the other things now, which I'll be showing you some cutaways of the various features. In the top section, you've got the section where your hard drive would go in here. And also you've got a big battery section. The battery can be disconnected if you want to, to do certain things. And as you can see in the bottom corner, we've got the speaker layout. Also, you've got the Kingston drive, which is included. That is a 256 gig model NVMe. Again, that is replaceable should you wish to. Access to the memory section is really easy to do. This whole back panel comes off very easily. It's just, uh, there's about nine screws and it just comes off really easy as most of the Acer models do. So if you're planning to do any modifications or maintenance tasks with this, again, it's going to be really, really simple. Excellent. I do love this. Really nice to take apart, unlike some of the things like the Microsoft Surface units, which are basically impossible and not designed to come apart. These are really flexible. So if you want to change things, add a hard drive, swap out an NVMe, upgrade the RAM, very, very straightforward to do. OK, so let's take a look at the unit itself and see how quick it is, all that kind of stuff. So easy to turn on, just press the power button and it comes on 
relatively quickly. Go to Acer logo, at this point you can go into BIOS and change any settings you want to in there. And you can see it's booted up actually very quickly. This is with the standard setup that comes out of the box. I have added a few apps such as uh, CPU-Z, hardware monitor, PC Mark 10, that kind of thing. And this is actually running on battery at the moment, so the display is very dim. So we can increase that by pressing on the button. You can lower it right down to increase battery, or you can turn it right up. It's not the brightest of displays, if I'm completely honest. And actually, even if we plug in the mains, which I'll do now, so even with the mains connected, the screen doesn't get any brighter. There's no limitations on that. So if you want a brighter screen, I would suggest looking elsewhere. But the beauty of this one is the viewing angles and the contrast and all that kind of thing. IPS screens are really well known for that. So for productivity uses, I think this is going to be absolutely brilliant. As you can see, the screen at the moment looks really good. Um, let's say we have run various things on here. One thing I did notice is under certain tasks, like most of the Acer units, the fan does ramp up and is pretty loud. So if you're looking for something which is completely silent, maybe look away from this or slightly up the product stack. Because of the integrated graphics all running off that same CPU, it does get quite warm quite quickly. And it's not unusual to see temperatures rising up to the high 80s or 90s just in normal use. There is advantage of the speed boost. So you can have one or two of the cores ramping up to really high speeds, like 4.2 gigahertz, as we said before. So for most productivity tasks, word processing, internet usage, all that kind of thing, it's absolutely brilliant, but it really does struggle in games. Another downside of Acer products, unfortunately, is the amount of bloatware that they actually come with straight out of the factory. Now this one actually came pre-installed with tons and tons of apps and Acer add-ons, which I'll be showing you in some of the B-roll footage. Also, it came with Norton Antivirus. Now, depending on your side of the coin, you may find that a bonus. You may find that a pain in the backside. For me personally, Long term wise, i would probably get this and do a complete factory reinstall with a brand new Windows image straight from the get go just to make sure that it's as clean and as bloat free as possible. But having said that, some of the apps which are included are quite useful and they do include quite a few little Microsoft Store games. So again, it's all down to your own personal preference. So to summarize, who is this designed for and would I recommend it? Ideally, the sort of person that is going to be using this is someone who is I would say more productivity focused, so maybe work online, that kind of thing. Maybe you have a commute and you want to take it on the train to do some work whilst you're traveling. For that sort of thing, absolutely fine. If you're maybe a slightly younger person and you want to do a lot more gaming, then I would certainly look slightly higher up the range or perhaps look at one of the others like the Acer Nitro with the AMD processors or maybe even Acer Aspire 5 A515, which we reviewed, which you can check out up here. Personally, I think that does offer more flexibility and the Vega 8 graphics certainly is much better than the integrated Intel UHD. But then the Intel UHD is not designed for gaming, it's designed for productivity use. So you have to make your decision. So this is really designed for, I would say, people who actually work for a living, who are on the internet pretty much most of the time, working, emails, all that kind of stuff, and also want a really decent battery life, which this does quite easily. Also, this has got the benefit of it being pretty much Intel through and through. So for compatibility's sake for certain applications, you're not going to find any issues there. There are some weird things that happen with AMD systems from time to time. So hopefully, fingers crossed with the Intel system, you won't experience that. So would I recommend it? Well, at the moment for people working from home and obviously with the COVID crisis going on, this makes a lot of sense. It's relatively inexpensive. It's pretty powerful and can definitely get the job done. So if you're a remote worker or a home worker, this is absolutely ideal. If you're into games and once you finish your daily work, you want to then play games on your laptop as well. No, this is not for you. This is not designed for that purpose at all. So I would certainly avoid it. So that pretty much wraps up my, uh, my impressions and findings on this unit. Again, fantastic for workers. Avoid it if you're a gamer. So this has been the Acer A515-52-582Y. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.